Today I'm going to show you an approach to making drinks that's absolutely leveled up every drink I ever make and I'm confident it'll level up yours too. It's an approach that's absolutely critical to making the best possible drinks but it's overlooked far too much of the time and today we're going to fix that. So what am I talking about? Stay tuned and let's level up some coffee cocktails. Welcome back to the Coffee Cocktail Channel. I'm Dan Fellows and today we're going to be talking about the importance of seasoning and balancing your drinks. So I'm not talking about changing the main ingredients and characteristics of the drink. I'm talking about the power that the smaller, kind of more subtle supporting ingredients have, which have the power to level up every single drink and really take it to the next level. These small ingredients might seem trivial, but properly seasoning and balancing our drinks really is the key to taking them from being good drinks and turning them into great drinks. So this approach has completely revolutionized how I make drinks. It informed my drink design when I was making drinks for the World Championships, which I was fortunate enough to win, as well as being the way I approach every single drink I ever make. Although we're gonna be looking at this through the lens of coffee cocktails today, it's also applicable to brewing coffee, to making cocktails without coffee, which also exist, and pretty much any drink you can imagine, including barista championship signature drinks. So as with any dish or any drink, if you have any kind of particular characteristic that's out of balance, it can completely ruin that dish or drink. So when we make drinks, we have a lot of decisions to make, but today we're gonna to get hyper-focused on a few key characteristics. So first of all, we're gonna look at acidity, different types of acidity and what it brings to the final drink. We're gonna look at sweetness, and then again, different kind of forms of sweetness and how this can be controlled to take the direction of the drink where we want it to be. We're gonna talk about bitterness and the power of bitterness, and it's not a bad thing, as long as it's in balance. We're gonna talk about salt, which I use a lot of the time. And we're gonna talk about the amazing potential of umami. So stay tuned till the end of the video, where I'm gonna be giving you two bonus tips, which allow us to elevate our drinks even further. So stick around for that. So when a drink tastes a little bit flat or it needs kind of brightening up or a little bit more vibrancy, we need to have a look at the acidity of the drink. So acidity is a really good thing, but when it's out of balance, it can completely ruin a cocktail. So when we talk about coffee, we have a few different ways to increase acidity naturally. So we can change the way we extract the coffee, Something I quite like to do is pull a really short espresso, like a ristretto style when I'm mixing it in cocktails, which will be intentionally unbalanced towards acidity, but it'll bring lots of body, lots of kind of intense coffee flavor, which we can then balance out with our other ingredients. So one thing I often say when it comes to coffee for coffee cocktails is that the optimal brewing recipe and drinking recipe isn't necessarily the optimal mixing recipe when it comes to coffee cocktails. So do always bear that in mind when you're brewing your coffee. When we're making cocktails, a really popular approach is just to add a small amount of lemon juice or lime juice to the cocktail in order to bring that acidity and balance things out. And you can do that here. You can use any of these ingredients which are inherently acidic to bring vibrancy and acidity to your drink. But the thing I prefer to do is make something like this, which is an acid solution, using all of the acids on the table in front of us, which I'm gonna talk about now. So four of my favorite acids to use are citric, malic, tartaric, and lactic. And I'll briefly cover what each of these are and the characteristics they bring. So when I'm making one of these, I'll make a 6% acid solution. So six grams of whichever acid we choose, and it can be a blend, which will then top up with hot water to 100 grams, making a 6% acid solution. So if we make a citric acid solution, this is gonna be that kind of tangy, sour, familiar acidity, which we all know and love, which is found in citrus fruits like lemons, limes, orange grapefruits, also pineapples and lots of other fruits. If we wanna go for a malic acid solution, which we're gonna have here, this is that kind of crisp acidity, most well known for being in apples. You have more malic acidity in green apples than you do red. That really kind of crisp, clean finishing acidity, which is really nice. This is what I use to complement the citric acidity of the blood orange and the tartaric acidity of the ice wine in my world championship winning cocktail, the frozen natural experiment. If you want to make a tartaric acid solution, which can be really useful, this has got that really nice kind of whiny, tannic acidity, which is often found in grapes, more so in red grapes than green, but found in both. And then one of my other favorite acids to use is lactic. So lactic acid is found in things like yogurt and fermented foods. It's got that kind of familiar, almost creamy acidity, kind of sour, but also really kind of textured. So really nice, powerful acid. So although I've given examples of which fruits contain which acids, fruits are much more complex than this. 
most fruits have a blend of different types of acid, but these are going to be really good examples of how they're going to come through in the final drink. If you do want to have some of the kind of flavor of the fruit in the drink as well, a really cool thing you can do is acid adjust the fruit. So what you need to do is bring up the acidity using the acid to add it to the juice to get where you want it to be in terms of the level of acidity. So because I work with a 6% acid solution across here, I tend to bring all of my fruits up to 6% if I'm going to add them to a cocktail. Oranges have around 1% acidity, so you need to add 5% acid to the juice. Grapefruits are closer to 2%, so you want to add 4% citric acid or a blend. Lemons are actually 6% acid just about, so you don't really need to acid adjust these. And limes are around about 8% acid, so you need to, if anything, bring more sweetness. So that's a really powerful approach. You can just dissolve the citric acid or whichever acid you use into a little bit of water, add it to your juice, and then you'll get your acid adjusted fruit juices. Once you've done this, you'll have the flavor of the fruit, but also the desired level of acidity. To summarize, acidity is much more than sourness. So make sure you think about the form of acidity and where it comes from. And when you've got your acidity, obviously we're gonna need something to balance that, which is gonna be sweetness. Right, so sweetness. The right level of sweetness is critical to a good drink. Too much sweetness and it'll be overpowering and sickly, not enough sweetness and all those positive flavors from the ingredients won't shine to their full potential. So when it comes to coffee, it's well documented that there's lots of different ways to kind of bring more sweetness to coffee, be that the coffee you choose, the water you use, the extraction tool you use, the brew recipe, extraction time, etc., etc. And I can't wait to share more information about how I make coffee with you in future videos, so stay tuned. But when you want to bring more sweetness through something like a sugar or a syrup or one of these things, it's really important that you use the appropriate type of sugar. So when it comes to cocktails, generally most bartenders will kind of default to a caster sugar syrup, usually a two to one syrup or a one to one syrup. And there's nothing wrong with this. Caster sugar is kind of clean. Essentially, it's pretty much just sweetness in the drink. It doesn't really bring anything. And when you're using a kind of very delicate coffee in a cocktail or a kind of white spirit driven cocktail, I think this is really useful. But it's actually, despite being the one that's used most probably globally, probably the sugar I use least when it comes to coffee and cocktails and coffee cocktails. So if I'm going to use a caster sugar, I'll use a golden caster sugar, which has a slightly higher level of molasses in there. It's got a very light kind of caramel flavor, still really easy to work with in a two to one or one to one syrup because it's really fine, but it's just got a really nice clean, light, honey-like sweetness without being overpowering, but it does bring something to the drink. If we want to go for something a little bit kind of richer and more toffee forward with again, more molasses, we've got light Muscovado sugar and then dark Muscovado sugar, which has more molasses again. Light Muscovado is kind of butterscotchy, got a really nice kind of toffee character, really nice fudgy texture, which is also in dark Muscovado, but dark Muscovado sugar is richer, deeper, a little bit of saltiness and bitterness coming through from the high molasses content. And again, really, really useful and powerful tool. We've also got either liquid form or dry form of molasses. So we've got black treacle, which is really, really dark. This will need watering down. And then we've got a molasses sugar, which again, can be made into a syrup. This is gonna have that really kind of bittersweet flavor, loads of rich, dark, leathery, sweet, kind of intense brown sugars. And again, in the right hands, this can be really useful. So when you think about the light to dark spectrum of sugar, if you think of any cocktail, pretty much any cocktail that has sugar, an old fashioned, a mojito, a sour, if it's made with a very white sugar, like a caster sugar, versus a very dark sugar, like a molasses, the character of the drink is gonna completely change. So this might actually make a drink kind of too confectionary rather than being kind of bringing character. Whereas if you move to this end of the spectrum, it might be too intense and overpower the ingredients. So you need to think about how much of that kind of rich molasses you want in there when you're adding this to a drink. So as you can tell, these sugars bring something different to the mix and I actually really like to blend them. So in my ultimate espresso martini recipe, which I'll link above, I blend golden caster sugar and light muscovado sugar. So we've got some of that really nice clean sweetness, as well as a little bit of kind of toffee-like fudginess from the light muscovado. As well as these kind of core sugars, we've got some really delicious other types of sugar, coconut sugar being one of my favorites. So this is made from coconuts, but it doesn't really have a coconutty flavor as such. It's kind of biscuity. It's got a kind of nutty character. It's also got the really nice tie into tropical drinks, works well with pineapple, and it's a really useful dry sugar, which can bring a lot of good quality sweetness to drinks. There are lots of other types of sugar, such as palm sugar, 
Japanese black sugar called Kurosato, which I love. I just don't have any at the moment. There's Rapidora sugar, lots of different types of sugar. So the moral here is make sure you choose the appropriate sugar for the drink you're making. And if you do want to add character to the drink, we've got a few options. So you could add a flavoured syrup, my preferred brand being Monin. And the reason I choose a flavoured syrup is because we want to add something different to the drink. So Monin syrups work equivalent to a two to one sugar syrup, bringing the right amount of sweetness when compared to a two to one syrup. But if you want to bring something a little bit different again, including a little bit of alcohol, you can use a liqueur. So there are many different liqueurs, but I really like Pedro Jimenez. It's got a really nice kind of raisin character, which ties in with coffee. But this will bring sweetness, but also some alcohol. So be mindful that you want to adjust your alcohol level of the drink if you're adding a liqueur. Outside this, we've got things like honey, which in itself has many, many varieties and different characteristics. Golden syrup, agave. All of these are kind of on the lighter end of the spectrum, so it can be used quite easily. Just bring them down with a little bit of water. And then we've got your kind of more flavor forward syrups like date syrup maple syrup, which everyone knows, which are going to bring quite a lot of character to the drink. Again, bring them down with water. So you just need to make sure that the flavors that all of these bring work with the final drink. So that's a lot of sugar, a lot of sweetness. The most important thing here is that sweetness isn't just sweetness. You need to think about the kind of sweetness, how it interacts with the other ingredients and making sure it doesn't overpower what's already there. So now we've got our acidity and sweetness boxed off. We need to look uh, something that is very important and actually is very positive, but often looked down upon, which is bitterness. So a lot of the time people will say they don't like bitterness, but what they actually mean is they don't like overpowering bitterness. So when we think of some of the best drinks in the world, they contain bitter elements, coffee being obviously something very obvious to this channel, but also drinks like an old fashioned and the Negroni, they have bitterness but when they're combined with the right level of sweetness and acidity and alcohol, etc., etc., they become truly magical and super delicious, like we all know and love. So this kind of level of balanced bitterness is really powerful. And if you wanna add bitterness to your drinks, we have a few different options. So when it comes to coffee, we can either intentionally over extract our coffee to bring some of those kind of more bitter flavors out. Again, optimal drinking and optimal mixing don't necessarily have to be the same. So you could actually enhance some of those bitter notes because we want to bring them into the balance of the drink. Another thing you can do is use your leftover pucks, which have already been extracted, or your leftover filter grounds. Infuse these into a spirit, just like I did in my spent coffee daiquiri when I was making a really nice zero waste lime cordial, which itself had an element of bitterness from the pits, which I'll link above. This brings a really nice kind of coffee flavor, but because this has already been extracted, we're leaning towards the kind of more bittersweet characteristics which tie into the spirits really, really nicely. You could also use something like coffee saccharum, which is a really nice kind of bittersweet coffee liqueur, which is made from leftover espresso pucks or filter grounds, extracted into some sugar in order to give us a really nice zero waste coffee syrup. And I'll also link above how to make that. Or if you wanna go for something completely different, you can go for a tea, which itself has that kind of astringency and bitterness, particularly when it's over brewed, which I've done here. But the kind of easiest way to add bitterness to our drinks from bottle form would be bitters. So you might've seen this box on my back bar. It's my bitters box, packed out with Scrappy's bitters. So we've got things like chocolate bitters, aromatic bitters, there's a Seville orange bitters, lime bitters, all sorts of different flavored bitters, all of which are gonna bring different characteristics to the drink. But the kind of really important thing here is to be really cautious with how much bitterness you add. So too much of your kind of bitters will overpower the drink, but when you've got the right amount, it can really, really round everything out and bring lots of delicious balanced bitterness to the drink. A couple of other options. We have things like beer, hops inherently are very bitter. We've got tonic water from the quinine, again, very bitter. And we've got Campari all of which have really big flavors, all of which do bring quite a lot of character to the drink. So you need to really manage that and make sure it doesn't overpower or change the drink. But each of these can be really useful when used in the right proportions in order to bring that level of bitterness to the drink. So acidity, sweetness, and bitterness, that amazing trifecta that we find in coffee also applies to cocktails. And when it's perfectly balanced can really, really level up your drinks. So now we've got those three taste groups singing, kind of harmonizing with each other and in perfect balance, we can start talking about some kind of seasonings, which can really, really take your drinks to the next level. The first of which being my secret weapon, salt. So when it comes to salt in drinks, 
this often raises an eyebrow, but actually when we think back to our chef analogy, salt is critical to pretty much every dish. And salt is critical to leveling up pretty much every drink I ever make. I always use this. So salt is really, again, very powerful. It does a really good job of suppressing bitterness and those kind of boozy flavors a lot of the time. It also bridges everything together really nicely. And if you taste a cocktail with and without saline solution, which is salt, pretty much every time you'll choose the one with the salt, even though it shouldn't be salty, it should just bring everything together and make it harmoniously sing. So I tend to add salt as a saline solution, which is one part salt to five parts water. I use these little dripper bottles to make sure I've got control over how much I add. And I tend to use around about one gram of this saline per hundred grams of our drink pre-dilution. So if we've got a hundred gram drink, one gram of saline will be just about perfect, generally with kind of big flavored ingredients. If it's a little bit more delicate, you can perhaps go a little bit lower because you don't want to taste the salt. You just want it to level everything up. I also like to use this, which is smoked salt in exactly the same way, making a saline solution, just like I did in my smoky coffee banhattan, which I'll link above, which highlights all the kind of rich, deep, smoky, leathery flavors that can be found in banana peels. And it's a really interesting and complex ingredient that can just really add something subtle, but really interesting to drinks. So saline solution, I always recommend. Smoked salt, also very cool. So there we have salt. If you're finding value from the channel, make sure you subscribe along. And next we're gonna talk about the untapped potential of umami. So before I talk about what I think is the massive potential of umami, I should briefly summarize what it is. So an umami taste is that really nice kind of Moorish, mouth-watering, delicious kind of brothy taste that you find in foods like mushrooms, in like a noodle broth, and also in tomatoes. In its purest form, you can use MSG, monosodium glutamate, which is pure kind of umami flavor. But I prefer to use some of these other ingredients, which to be honest, I've not fully experimented with, but I'm gonna be experimenting with a whole lot more in the future, so stay tuned for that. So at the moment, the biggest kind of most surprising and delicious thing I've added to a cocktail for a long time is white miso. So miso is a fermented soybean and rice, which has got loads of umami flavor. It does also have a little bit of salt in there, so you need to be mindful that you're not adding too much salt to your drinks. But adding miso, like I did in my recent drink, Pucks and Peels, completely changed the texture, the balance of the drink in such a good way. So I'm gonna be using that a whole lot more in drinks in the future probably substituting out saline solution for this, just because we've already got the salt in there. But we do have a few other options. So when we think of a dirty martini, which is a really famous drink, part of the reason that's so delicious is because it contains olive brine, which again does have salt, but also it's got lots of umami in there. So this works really well and can be added in very small proportions to drinks. And I'm gonna be testing this a lot more in future in other coffee cocktails. We also have things like dried mushrooms, which can be steeped in water, and then you can use the water in small amounts to bring that umami flavor. But also you could infuse this into a spirit. I'm just buzzing to play around with this. So make sure you let me know in the comments if you tried any of these and how you get on, because I think the potential of these is gonna be so good. We're gonna be able to make some delicious drinks with these. And then another option would be nori sheets, used in the same way, infused into a spirit, infused into water, and like I say, very, very exciting. All right, so now we've spent some time focusing on all of the main taste groups, acidity, sweetness, bitterness, salt, and umami, although there are more taste groups, which is open for discussion. We found a really good place where we've looked at the balance of each of these, how they work together, and where they come from. And your drink should be looking really, really good. So for the final part of the video, I'm gonna give you two bonus tips. The first of which is to use bridging ingredients. So if you have a drink which is on paper delicious, but in the drink comes across a little bit disjointed or spiky, we can use what are called bridging ingredients in order to bring together those big distinct flavors and make them more harmonious. So one of my favorite things to use here is spice. So you can either infuse the spice like a cinnamon, clove, vanilla, cardamom, whatever, into a spirit. You can also make a spiced sugar syrup, and this will do a really good job of bringing big flavors together, particularly if you have coffee and your kind of darker spirits in there. So spices can be really useful. As I always say, don't use too much clove because it's such a big flavor, it can easily overpower drinks, but it's something that can really help bring it all together. So another favorite bridging ingredient of mine is vanilla extract, and this is really, really useful. I use it actually quite a lot, and I treat it almost like saline. So when the saline principle is we don't want the drink to taste like salt, we just wanna elevate what's already there. 
when it comes to vanilla extract. I don't want the drink to taste like vanilla as such, although that is delicious. We actually want to bring all the ingredients together, round it out, and it kind of softens everything and just makes everything kind of hug and work really nicely together. On the other side of that, we've got things like rose water and orange blossom water. Tiny, tiny amounts in there, otherwise it's gonna taste like your nan's perfume. This can bring a really nice complexity to drinks, particularly when they're sweet and sour driven. A little bit of florality can work really well. And also when you're using things like gin, vodka, and your kind of lighter, more floral coffees, a little bit of rose water or orange blossom water can be really, really good. And then a final favorite bridging ingredient I like to use is a spritz bottle, like this. So you can take in a different aroma. This is a really peaty whiskey, which I used in my recent smoky coffee Manhattan. That was a drink which was delicious in its own right. But when you finished it off with a little spritz of a smoky peaty whiskey, it just made the whole drink even better. Adding an extra layer of complexity, an extra layer of aroma, and this is making me want some peaty whiskey. So these tools are really, really useful. And now we're gonna talk about our final bonus tip, which is all about texture. So if you can elevate the texture of a drink, it's only gonna do good things for the final kind of end result of the drink and the experience the drinker has. So we have a few options, such as the way we mix the drink. If you're gonna shake the drink or blend it, you're gonna get much more foaminess and kind of integration between textures, especially useful if you have espresso or kind of citrus fruit in there. If you stir the drink, it's gonna be much more elegant and refined, way less kind of foaminess, but a more kind of rounded out delicate drink, which can work really well for a lot of lighter drinks as well. So as well as this, we also have really cool techniques at our disposal, which can really allow us to kind of level up the texture of our drinks. One of which being fat washing, which I'll link a video about above, where I make a cacao butter washed coffee old fashioned, which is as delicious as it sounds. And using this, we're gonna infuse a fat into the drink, freeze it and strain it out in order to get the kind of delicious silky texture and the flavor from the fat without any of the kind of slickness that you don't want in there. And before I talk about one of my favorite techniques in order to elevate the texture of our drinks, please let me know if this is useful. Make sure you comment below on which bits kind of resonated with you, which things you might not have thought about before. And to summarize, essentially what we're doing here is taking our core drink, thinking about how delicious this is and how we can use little accessories around it, such as the form of acidity, the type of sweetness, the level of bitterness, a little bit of salt, the power of umami, and how we can really use these to level up those drinks. I actually think this hyper-focused approach, looking at how we can perfectly season and balance our drinks, it completely changed the way I make drinks and hopefully it can be helpful to you as well. So if you found value from this video, which I really hope you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel here and also follow me on Instagram at danfellows1. And if you wanna know about the final technique, which is one of my absolute favorites in order to level up the texture of your cocktails, which is milk clarification, you can click here for a really cool template on how to do this. And also here, which is an application of this in an espresso Negroni. So make sure you check out those videos and make sure you get experimenting with the seasoning and balance of your drinks. Look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers.